Hello guys, and welcome back to another session of Learning Unity with me. Um, where we last left off, I think we were... Yeah, finishing up the death effects, and this is what we have so far. Sorry, I just wanted to check on something. It makes collision. That's kind of way too fast. Like if I could, if I was a, a little bit more better, what I think would work better would be creating like a shock animation. Oh yeah, like I said, uh, what I would have done was to maybe have an an like a specific animation for the lizard, which looks like it's getting shocked. I think that would be better, but I, I really don't have that experience at the moment. So I'm fine with what we have for now. Alright, so let's just continue. I think we finished this one, right? I was looking at the Q and A last time, this one, and then we used that part, which yeah, I, I do agree, it looks much better. So let's go ahead and see what that is. Is it supposed to be here? So it grabs the the actual duration of the particle as opposed to just saying one F or one second, which is just a guess in my opinion. Um, you know I guess so we could use so this one it's saying that it can like even though it's um, it is I guess the variation of it there is a ch small chance it might get cut and to prevent that we instead use constant max which is I think a lot better because you wait for the like the max time I mean but I guess it doesn't really matter for mine since there is none and it's pretty good constant see duration is 25 and then I guess the lifetime that's what you said right start lifetime so you're saying this property matters more than duration well you know what no I think I'm just stick with duration duration it basically means one life cycle right. while this one is one second or point one second of life so that's how long the, this particle will exist until it disappears as opposed to this one which tries to force tries to force itself so I'm just gonna stick with duration for now all right let's see what else we can find Solution setting animation to the correct location is by using the collider as your guide. The collider has a property called offset. It tells you the distance between the center of your object to its current anchor point. In your health.cs class, you can use a cache variable to pull down the collider 2D and utilize the offset property to do some vector addition with the current game object position. You get something like this. 
so we can get the collider 3d and then we have an offset so the position of the transform Just to make sure whatever you decide to call the offset is the serialized field for type vector 2. My energy is playing behind the character, so I found a negative 0.5 offset just about perfectly. Uh, transform dot rotation. How would I use this? <gasps> Collider offset, huh? So, like, for example, let's go to the lizard, and then I guess the collider would be this one. And if we double click on lizard, notice how there's an offset between the actual sprite versus the object of interest. And so what I'm thinking he's doing here is he's calculating the difference between this anchor point and let's say the to the actual collider location. And we're gonna offset it based on that. I don't get how this one's better. <laughs> like, what does VFX affect? It says create a serialized field type with vector 2. And that's if you really want to adjust it even further. But this one, make sure like it's the distance to the the actual collider. Or the point, basically or the point of interest. So I think this is better, I think. But I mean, if you want to change it, you know, this might be better too. This one's all more open to... Uh, try out different values to make it look better here this one's a little bit more I guess accurate in that sense that it's trying to get closer to the the object of interest uh, I do want to try it too just just to see how it looks so in our um, help class I'm going to pass in a cache reference not pass in And then wider to D my wider. Uh, yeah, well it's called wider. Same thing as this. And then in private let's start my wider is a component point to D. So we grab the object and then um, to instantiate a D here we need to pass it we need to create a vector to um, particle offset position plus I guess and then it's the transform dot position Plus my collider dot offset. Oh, never mind. I thought it was, it was calculating the difference between the anchor point and then the collider, but it looks like you have to adjust it here. Wait, what? Never mind. <laughs> What is it trying to do? Let me try it. Offset as a property. Yeah. It 
saying this is oh wait oh because this is vector 3 mm, I don't know how risky it is to just cast a vector 3 to vector 2 but I don't think it should matter that much and actually we have to also change the the effects the uh, renderer and then the offset is zero so if I go here we have the offset which we could have used our pivot what where's the offset of oh, pivot idea what I did. What? Alright, let's just see. Didn't really do much. Let me read this answer again. The collider has a property called offset. It tells you the distance between the center of the object to the current anchor point. But mine says zero. In your health, you have to cache barrel to pull down the collider and utilize the offset property to do the same vector addition with the current game object position. You get the following like this. Do I have to name like a specific collider? Maybe. I think I have to do that. Still no offset. Because he said that. So the collider has a property called offset that tells you the distance between the center of your object to its current anchor point. And what I thought that meant, I think he does mean that, is that when you click on lizard, I'm thinking that the offset is based on the location of the collider based on the anchor point. But my offset doesn't do that unless I'm doing it using. Is it because of the collider to do that I'm using? Yeah. So I guess it's because of the polygon collider. Ah, dang it. So I guess that's a huge difference then. Then yeah, alright, that makes sense. So I can't use polygon collider. Or can't I?
Dang, it looks pretty cool. I want to try to create something like this. <laughs> oh, so he has a collider for each body part. That's interesting. Um, but from the time being, what do I do? I think let's do a capsule capsule collider 2D. Let's do that then. So we're gonna let's disable this. So this is will be. I mean, if it hits here, then it should be fine. Um, yeah, I think this should be fine. So let's instead of polygon, it be a capsule collider. Capsule collider 2D. Unless collider 2D works for all of them. Will be a lot better in my opinion because then I don't have to worry too much about it. Which seems to be the case. Since I didn't I don't get an inter inter or exception when uh, calling the uh, error. That looks better. Yeah, that that looks way better. So I guess it just doesn't work for polygon collider. So I'll probably link this up. Uh, notes. Put Q and A learning. Right. So then there's this one where I say um, using collider 2D offset to offset the particle. Um, to the correct location by finding the distance and the difference between a collider to the offset and anchor point of sprite and then I guess I'll just comment just in case I want to look at it the link and then also post a code just to make it look better there it is the code All right. there was that also the other thing I want to include that as well um, using or when destroying a particle game object instance, you can dynamically get use the particles um, duration to delete to know to know when delete. I think that's what makes sense. Uh, first of all, grab the link, comment, and then the code. So I can just look at the code instantly. Cool. Yeah, I should do this more often in the, in the upcoming lectures. Alright, let's go to the other ones before we continue. Tip destroy particle effect without code. 3D inspector. Huh, what? To do so, go to the particle effects, particle system component, name effects, stop action. Once you send that to destroy, the game logic will destroy itself. Once the time you send, the duration is determined. Oh. Alright, well, that's also another link I'm going to mention. So, like. Or link. 
the leading article to expect no code. better way of showing a particle yeah so that's basically what he's saying over here what's this that looks good he already has implemented a score what what is that a bunch of leaves reminds me of salad <laughs> But yeah, pretty cool. Um, nesting instantiate using destroy what works perfectly if we aren't doing anything else with the game object. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It seems kind of. I mean, I guess for him it works, but to me it's kind of hard to read. Like destroy instantiate. I'll say, oh yeah, it's creating a, a game object. Like right now, I know it because you know we just did it. Like later down the line, I'm like, wait a minute, what? Like oh, it'd be a lot easier to just you know keep them separated. Like oh yeah, death of X. So you want to destroy the death of X object and this duration as opposed to reading this first and then like understanding it and then going to here. You can simplify it by naming what whatever this is and then saying what we're destroying but that's just my opinion so yeah null versus not equals hey what hi there i was wondering if saying equals equals null return is the same thing as saying If that's PFX is equivalent to not equals null. Right, I think we're pretty much done. Alright, let's get to the next one. Right, you guys can't see it unfortunately but essentially what we're supposed to be making is supposed to first of all create an object that overlays the part that we want the user to only be able to create the defenders so it'd be up to here and then add a script to that object and then in that object or in that script um, we want to listen for mouse clicks or left mouse clicks so let me I think I understand what he's trying to say but I'm gonna try my best it's still kind of iffy so we'll have in area I guess um, reset so how do you make like a Is there like effects? No, I don't know what those are to the animation. No rendering. 
canvas. White robe. Um, UI. It's not UI though. I just want like some sort of indicator that shows me how big this game object is. Maybe we got an error. What? Line 34. What? Wait, can I just do this? Nope, I can't. <laughs> um. Oh wait. Nope. Can you do like a sprite render? This is kind of tough. I don't know how to, you know, show it. <sighs> you know, what, let's just do Sprite Render. <sighs> no, 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 no. There has to be a better way. So my, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make it so that I can do that. You know, let's see how he does it. A box, coll it's a collider? What? What would it be a collider? Eh, yeah, whatever. Offset. Alright, reset it. So I'm thinking it should be here. Because we don't want them being able to create any enemies down here or any defenders down here. So first of all, let me make sure it kind of matches to what I want it. Alright, and then we're going to do a rectangle tool. It's the rectangular tool. Oh, we need to do this. Alright, it's supposed to go only up to here. So that would be our game area. And then we're going to create a script called game area here. Oh, wait a minute. Um, edit script. All right. And then we have to go to the project settings. And then look at the controller. Input manager, axes, mouse x, mouse y.
have editor, audio, input, I think it's input manager, horizontal, get must button down, so we have to do input dot get must button down, zero. Let me look back at the challenge. Use on mouse down. It's on mouse down. Mono behavior. Oh, it's a method. And I guess it's part of this class here. It's called when user has pressed the mouse button while over the collider. Huh, interesting. This event is sent to all scripts when the object of collider or GUI element script of the parents or child object do not receive this event. This function is not called on objects that belong to or ignore Raycast. This function is called colliders. It's called on colliders marked as trigger if and only if queries that trigger is true. Oh, so, but then, yeah, this part is important. It's, so, this method is only called when the user has pressed has clicked within a collider. Cool, 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 cool. Alright, so let's go ahead and do that. Do I need this? In the game area, the only functionality that we need to do is listen for mouse clicks. So I don't think so. The start method, maybe. You know, I don't think so. We need that either because we don't need to instantiate anything right yeah so all we need to do is private void on mouse down and then we just need to debug mouse put on within game area Compiler issues, hopefully. Nice. All right. So we had to click here. See that it's an add collider. It's like, wait, how did we know how to do that? Like, oh yeah. Oh, I wonder why. Let me just quickly check on something about OBS. OBS doesn't record video. Well, I guess I have to fix it. All right, I might fix it when I have time this week. But it's kind of, I'm kind of curious of how it knows that I'm watching a video. Like it, it can clearly tell when I'm on a web page or a static image. But then when it's like a video, it doesn't seem to work. It's interesting. Oh wait, why does it look like that? So I guess the back isn't supposed to be for that. All right, let's just fix it then. Keep messing that up. Alright, cool.
Mine's 3.5. <laughs> what? But that's a little bit more accurate. I agree. Because the main camera is moved by 5 to th th Actually, no. 5 and 3. And then if we reset the position of the thing, it would be here. So I would need to move it 5 and 3, right? Oh, never mind. <laughs> hey, what? Wait, let me see that again. So seven, I mean, technically, if you round up, half of seven is four, and half of five is three, if you round up. Alright, I think I can do it. If not, then it's fine. So we know we can get the or listen to the mouse click using this method. Um, now what we want to do is get the position of the mouse. So how would we do that? Um, I'm looking for 2D. Let me put that mouse position. Input that mouse position is a vector 3 compatibility. Input mouse position is a vector 3 for compatibility with functions that have vector 3 arguments. I'm guessing XYZ uh, positions. 
the z co component of vector 3 is always 0. The bottom left of the screen is 0, 0. The top right is the screen width, right? For its position of the mouse even when it's in not inside the game view, such as the cursor lock state is set to cursor. I don't know. Alright, so we have to get the position of vector 3 mouse position equals input dot input dot mouse position. So we don't have to worry about it being outside because we only want to read it if it's within our game area. Wait, why is that a method? That's a block code. Why do you do that? I guess together. Just put it together. Um, and then I guess we can debug block mouse position at x. Is this how it should work? I think it should be fine. Whoa, what was that? Did we get an error? Nope. Alright, so let's go ahead and see. Nothing here, nothing here, but let's say if I put it here, here, here. We can get the position of the mouse. So what we want to do is, you know, first of all, uh, config frames. Stand sheet. Defender There you go I don't know if that's the right way of doing that But I think it should work Let's go to our prefab Our defender will be Pikachu What? Oh, because we need to set the um, the order and layer. Hey, where is it? It's here. That's weird. <laughs> well, essentially that's what I thought we'd do. But let's see how he does it. And then we pass in an auction.
Well, I'm curious how that works because I'm kind of lost. All right, you need to. Yeah, I didn't see that. Uh. Yeah, I won't get too f too ahead of myself for now. So I'm just going to pry the forwards on Fender. And then we're going to like right there. Pew 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 pew. <laughs> but right now they don't have the properties of a Pikachu. They need to wait can I put that here actually? So you have me thunder cheeks. What? Oh did I forgot to alright yeah, we need to update the Pikachu prefab. And then let's see. Will they start shooting? Yep, that's it. <laughs> they. So let's look at the questions just to see what we missed. All right, so let's see this one. I have a question. Um, about the instantiate as game object in a previous video you were instantiating the explosion you didn't add the as game object at the end and in this video 
he did that. Why didn't he defend her? He needs game object at the end. And the death VFX object doesn't need it. That's a good question. I actually had thought about that too. In earlier Unity versions, explicitly casting with as game object was required. Otherwise, you would, you would have get gotten errors. In later Unity versions, I think of as of 2017, it's not necessary anymore. Since Rick has been using Unity for a while, I suspect he added as game object out of habit. Even the API is inconsistent in that respect. I didn't know. Oh, all right, that's good to know. So I guess we don't need to do that anymore. It's not working. Wait, let me read it. It just seems like a lot. <laughs> let this be a lesson about working games for weeks straight for long stretches of time. I was clicking the CMD while the game was in play mode. I had collapse. Alright. Yeah. So I guess there's some issues uh, regarding about, you know, playing an animation to move the, to move the, the projectile and also making it move through code. So if you use both of them, I guess there, there is an issue uh, in terms of the location, I guess, of it being spawned. I think that's because of the animation. I don't know, I didn't read it that well. <laughs> um, Alright, so I guess we can just move on. How many more videos do we have left? For this game? Oh my, that's so much, so much left. 30 more videos. That's pretty interesting that they are you guys can't see it, but they had this method called get square. So I guess it rounds the, the square's position based on where the mouse is clicked. That makes much more sense. I was like, how is that going to how are we gonna check that?
I forgot what that is. <sighs> Let me see. The world, the world space point created by converting the green screen space point at the provided distance z from the camera plane transforms point from screen space into world space, where world space is defined as the coordinate system at the very top of the game's hierarchy. So what I'm understanding is it basically allows us to normalize the points that we've clicked on the screen. So in our screen resolution, it could be 253, comma, 300, right? But then in the, in the game's world, it normalizes those values to say like 2, 3, or something like that. World space coordinates can still be calculated even when provided as an off-screen coordinate, for example, for instantiating an off-screen object near a specific corner of the screen. Screen space is defined in pixels. The bottom left of the screen is 0, 0, and the top right is pixel width, pixel height. That's screen space. The Z position in world units from the camera. Alright, uh... <laughs> that convert that normalizes the click position, I think. I think he already showed the code in the beginning, but also I don't remember it, so it's still kind of be a challenge to me. Thirty-one hours, so I'll probably get to this challenge again tomorrow in tomorrow's session or the next time. I can't promise anymore, like daily. But most likely, I will make another session tomorrow. So, all right, I'll see you guys tomorrow then. Peace.